Welcome back to my channel, the number one place to find Archfiend related jewels, reviews and combos. So in this particular video, we are going to be looking at some combos related to the Red Eyes Summon Skull deck that we made previously. So if we take a look at what we've got so far, this is a very simple combo that we can pull off, one of the easiest ones to do. You can use Foolish Burial, for example, throw uh, a Rhino Warrior into the grave, and then we can go ahead and put Ka uh, put Heiress into the grave. Then that gets her effect, which allows you to search for any Archfiend that you like. In this case, we can bring Summon Skull to the hand. And then if you have Commander and Cavalry in your hand, you can Summon Cavalry, use the Special Summon off of Commander to destroy Cavalry, which allows you to then Special Summon a Archfiend from the grave. Now, in this particular instance, you could do that, but if you have Rapid Trigger in your hand, you can activate that straight away. And instead of destroying those monsters, you can then use Rapid Trigger to summon, say, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Like that. So now we've got a monster which is unaffected by extra deck monster effects, and we still get our Cavalry, which lets us bring out any Archfiend that we like. So let's just revive Commander. Now we've got two monsters right off the bat, which are fairly strong. A similar combo, which uses pretty much the same cards, we can use Foolish Burial to dump a Summon Skull into the grave. Then we can do the Cavalry and Commander combo. Uh, only this time we are not using Rapid Trigger, we are going to destroy Cavalry, and that is going to revive Summon Skull from our grave straight to the field. Now this lets us go straight into a rank 6 play for example, we can go into Ascent, or now we can use our Rapid Trigger, which will destroy those monsters and bring out an Archfiend's Manifestation, being unaffected by extra deck monster effects. So there's two Archfiend, well, there's two Summon Skull monsters that you can go into straight away with that sort of combo. Now if you open up with Tour Guide, there's a few things you can do. If, uh, for example, you have Rubik in the deck, you can special summon that out and go into a Needle Fiber play. If it's in your hand or you don't want to do that, you can summon Tour Guide onto the field. Then use its effect to summon any monster you like, really. So let's go ahead and summon Rhino Warrior. Uh, its effect is negated, but when it's sent to the grave, it's fine. So we'll summon Rhino Warrior, we'll special summon Anaconda. And then using Rhino Warrior's effect, we are going to send Heiress to the grave, which gets her effect. And using that, we can search for Summon Skull, bring that into the hand. And then once you've got that, you can use Anaconda's effect to use a Poly using the Summon Skull that we just searched for, and either itself or something in the hand, and we can bring Manifestation onto the field fairly quickly. If you open up with Tour Guide and Rubik is still in the deck, you can summon it, and now we can go into good old Christron, Hakofibrax, or Needle Fiber, whichever you want to call it. Throw that onto the field, and then get its effect, and then pretty much go off from there. So you can summon Jet Synchron, and then you can use uh, those to go into Aurora Don. So this is the simplest Savage Arc like combo that you can use. It just takes a while of setup. Uh, if they have Nibiru in hand, then you're not going to have a very nice day. But uh, based off of this, we're going to use Aurorodon's effect to special summon a Mecha Phantom Beast, so kill itself and the token. Bring out O-Lion, just whack that in defense or whatever. And then we're going to uh, synchro those into Savage Dragon. So just throw that on the field, not in the extra deck zone. And then we're going to use its effect and then chain that with our Mecha Phantom Beast monster to get a token onto the field. And then we're going to equip Aurora Don. Because it's a link 3, that basically means we get 3 tokens, so that's 3 negates. And then finally, to finish off the combo, use Jet Synchron's effect to put a card back into the deck, special summon it, and then use those to go into Herald of the Arclight. Or Final Sigma if you want, but I don't really recommend that. So straight into Arclight, and then that's four negates on the board, or, or at least two per turn, you know. So not too bad. Another simple combo is if you open up with Red Eyes Insight, you can just bring the Red Eyes Fusion straight to your hand, 
and then that's a turn one dragon. So uh, that's it's not really a combo, right? It's just a simple uh, two card setup, and then away you go. That's dragon done. Now let's say you open up with a resonator, and if you've got cavalry in your hand, that's a quick combo straight away into Archfiend's call. So use those two, whack that on the field, and then special summon straight into Archfiend's call from there. Which means that all your summon skulls, including itself, are untargeted by your opponent's card effects. And then when it gets destroyed, it can just search out another um, summon skull monster. So another combo that you can use with the same cards, uh, just one more that you need. Let's say you have Resonator Call, or if you have Crimson Resonator. So bring that into the hand. And then we're going to use its effect to special summon itself. Keep in mind this locks you into only Dark Dragon Synchro Monsters, but that's okay. So now we're going to summon Red Resonator, use its effect to bring out Archfiend Cavalry. And now we are going to summon Red Rising Dragon. So let's get rid of those two monsters, special summon, and then use its effect to bring Red Resonator back. Now, Resonator's second effect just lets you get a bunch of life points, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Now, because we've got a Dark Tuner, we can Special Summon Beals straight from there, and then that gives you a monster that can't be destroyed by Battle or Card effects, so it's okay. Now, if this was your second turn, you can also go into Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane, and then attack to bring your resonators back. So I'll just show you what you can do with that. So I say, you know, if it's your second turn because you don't want this thing to get destroyed too quickly. So I'm going to go straight into battle phase. I'm just going to attack this thing. Now we can use its effect. So let's bring a dark tuner and then let's bring red resonator. Resonator's effect, gain some life points. It's nice. Now in main phase two, we can then summon Final Sigma, throw it in the extra monster zone, and now it's unaffected by card effects. Similarly, you can use some of those monsters to go into either Anaconda, to go into a Archfiend play, or you can go into Needle Fiber and go into your Savage Dragon combo from there. So you've, you've got a lot of options that you can choose from. Now let's say you open up with a Polymerization and you have the necessary cards in your hand. So you could go ahead and activate Poly and summon Manifestation. Let's just pitch RS. Now, because RS was used for a card effect, we get to search off of it, which is nice, but you may not always open up with that. So this isn't something that you could consistently do. And you can bring to your hand anything you like. So this could be another Summon Skull. Uh, I would probably bring the Cavalry or the Commander because Commander at least lets you normal summon and then get a level six from the grave. So Manifestation, you could tribute that and then special summon it back. I don't see much point in that because then you lose the floating effect of manifestation, uh, but maybe you want to go into ascent for some reason. Uh, maybe you need the extra protection. So you could do that. And so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring command to the hand. And if you've got Rhino Warrior in your hand and you haven't normal summoned, you can throw that onto the field and now at least manifestation is protected from battle and card effects for the time being. And if you didn't, if I didn't have Dark Magician in the hand, I could go nuts, you know, and just summon Anaconda and bring out a Dragon from there if I wanted to. So in terms of combos, there's not too many more to uh, talk about really. Um, they're your main ones. You just need to go into your Archfiends and your Dragons as quick as you can. Uh, just protect yourself for a few turns and then once you've got that build up, you can start bringing out Summon Skull a bit more consistently. If we just go into Test Hand, for example, uh, so this opening one right here, you know, I've got a Red Eyes Insight, I could summon Dragon. I, uh, for example, just throw the one in my hand to the grave, and then I get a Red Eyes Fusion. And then I can activate it if I wanted to. Um, what else have I got in the hand? I've got Fusion Deployment, so that can bring out Summon Skull. Uh, we can go into Tour Guide, and since we don't have any tuners in our hand, so Rubik's in the deck, straight into a Needle Fiber play from there. Uh, we can similarly go into Anaconda as well. Uh, that could have gone into Dragon or Manifestation. So depending, you know, if they're not using Nibiru, I would probably go for the Arc Light combo right now off of Tour Guide. If they do have that, 
then it might be a good idea to go into Dragan instead. So already, like turn one, we've got pretty decent options to protect ourselves from the old, the good old turn two OTK, right? So let's just go ahead and activate this. Uh, throw this and this in the grave, summon this. Can't summon anything else for that turn, so we'll just end. Another combo, so we've got Void Apocalypse, we could activate that. Uh, we can use its effect. Let's just get rid of Red Eyes. And now we can throw something into the grave, so that might be an Heiress. And then Heiress's effect activates, that's letting us search for something. So I could, for example, bring Cavalry into the hand. And then we have a Foolish Burial. So our Foolish Burial could pitch Plague Spreader Zombie. And then we can use Plague Spreader. Let's just put Red Eyes back into the deck. Let's Special Summon that. Let's Summon Cavalry. And now we could go into Dragon from there if we wanted to. We could go into our Arc Light combo. We can go into Archfiend's Call. Um, so any one of those that you want to take your pick on, it's, it's completely fine. And uh, yeah. So we just roll the dice again. We've got Red Eyes Fusion. That's nice. Open up that so we can go ahead straight into a Dragon play. Uh, we've got our Tour Guide. So we could once again, if it doesn't get Ash Blossomed, go into a Archfiend's Manifestation. Or an arc like combo or a gun, right? So those you get in the, the sort of combo now, like the, the, the top three combos of the deck is to bring out either a summon skull, synchro, or a fusion, not really the XYZ, and either Dragon or the Arc Light combo. So what have we got here? We can summon sorry, we can send to the grave RS. And then we can search for say commander, because you've already got summon skull in the hand. We can activate this, use Polly, and bring this out. So I'll just use that and that. And now it's floating here. Next turn I've got my commander and cavalry play. I can go into all sorts of stuff based off of the combos that we mentioned earlier. Right, restart. Um, so here it's a bit more tricky. So we do have a sacred sword if we just want to go ahead and banish Dark Magician. That means we won't be able to go into our Dragon at all. So that's something to be mindful of. Uh, we could special summon Crimson Resonator and then normal summon Rhino Warrior. Keep in mind that locks us into our only Dark Dragon Synchro Monster plays, which isn't great. So let's activate this and see what it gives us. So we got rid of that and summon Tor Guide off of it, so now we can go into a Savage Arc Light play. We can activate Resonator Call. Bring red resonator to the hand. We can do something interesting there. You know, summon that special summon um, Rhino Warrior and do it exact the exact combo that Tall Guy would have done. So, a couple of options. Uh, I just restarted, and that was pretty much the same hand. So I'm just going to do that again. Uh, we've got Red Eyes Fusion, so straight into Dragon. Uh, we have Fusion Deployment, which will let us, for example, bring Summon Skull to the hand. Sorry, that's our special summon, summon skull. And then we could polymerization. So manifestation and heiress, straight into that. Get its effect, and we can search for whatever we like. So cavalry or commander, probably the better options. And then next turn, we can summon dragon. So I would probably do dragon first, and then manifestation second, once you get the ball rolling a little bit. Uh, so here we've got a poly, so we can go into manifestation. We can also go into what yeah, what I would do here is a needle fiber play, praying that it didn't have Nibiru. Uh, and then once I've got Savage Dragon and Arc Light on the field, I would then use Polly to bring out manifestation as well. So summon Tour Guide, use its effect, summon Rubik, and then go into straight into the Arc Light combo, right? So destroy those two, summon this, activate its effect, get Jet Synchron, whack that there. Use those to summon Aurora Dom. Gain its effect. Special summon the tokens. So summon these. This combo is, you know, it, it's a bit hit and miss because not only is it susceptible to Nibiru, you can also Ghost Ogre it, 
as soon as you as soon as the opponent sees that you summon uh, hack off a brax or needle fiber they'll ghost ogre that and it's game over so don't rely on this combo to be honest but it you've got the option to do it savage dragon activate chain summon a token get a roar on and equip it like this use jet synchron let us get rid of black dragon and that go into arc light and then finally use poly to bring out manifestation get rid of these two summon that and away you go um, you could probably summon manifestation before you bring out arc light because then that way you get a chance of putting the fusion materials into the grave and then that that would give you an ARS search so that ARS search could be a cavalry or a commander right but that pretty decent board that is basically an, an OTK sitting there you know you can negate through your opponent's plays you can remove their stuff so that locks kind of locks out their grave and then even if they manage to destroy manifestation for example you would just get a summon skull anyway which isn't a huge deal but at least you've got board presence uh, and then the we'll just do a last sort of uh, hand test so void apocalypse let's get rid of fusion deployment it's not too needed in this particular combo we're going to do so we've got options here uh, if you want to go slow you could get rid of Skarm and then just put a tour guide into your hand for next turn uh, I'm going to get rid of Rhino Warrior and then that effect is going to go off and that's going to let me go into ARS which would then let me search for whatever I like so commander for example and now I can do a classic cavalry commander play that can bring back something so that would be RS and then I can go into Anaconda and go into a fusion or I could go into tour guide and if it gets ash blossom then you know so be it but if it doesn't then you can go into arc light um, and savage dragon from here so it's a, it's a fairly decent deck in terms of getting those combos going it does occasionally brick this uh, hand here that's not particularly great uh, if we do it again uh, you can see that we've got a Savage Dragon combo waiting to happen, but nothing else for the time being. Yep, so we've got a combo here, so it's not too bad. So yeah, that about wraps up the combo video. I hope you enjoyed. So as you can see, there's three sort of combos that you uh, basically want to open up with. One of those being the Savage Dragon combo, the Dragon, or some sort of Archfiend related Synchro or Fusion play. Uh, it's a fairly fun deck. It's a bit oppressive because of Dragon, unfortunately that's just the way the meta seems to be shifting. Uh, it's a very strong card, uh, it, in my opinion it does have a bit too many effects on it. But we can splash it in this deck, it works, it makes Summon Skull a bit stronger than it used to be. So uh, I'm happy about that. If you enjoyed and you are interested, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, it really helps a lot. Um, I always enjoy having these uh, sort of mini conversations with you in the comment section about anything related to the to the video or even just the archetypes that we reviewed. So it's all great fun. So if you're interested in Archfiend related uh, jewels and reviews, uh, any other sort of content based around the archetype, then feel free to have a browse. But until next time, I'll see you around.